North Australia is a vast gateway for pests, weeds and diseases coming in by wind, tide, human and animal movement from the north and from the south. If we keep our north safe and sustainable, all Australia benefits. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities have been protecting food sources, including significant animals and plants, for millennia. I love bees. Bees are the best. Bees are amazing. They have a power way beyond their size. Did you know that pretty much everything we eat is thanks to bees? As pollinators, bees visit our flowers and collect pollen. They take it back to their hive to feed their young, and then their young become bees that go out and pollinate flowers, which become our fruit and vegetables, which we eat. So if we eat it or drink it, bees probably helped. We're totally interconnected with the life cycle of bees. Talk about partners for life. The Asian honeybee. Asia. Our neighbour. Apis serena. Apis serona. Sounds friendly enough. They carry bee diseases and pests. They compete with other creatures for our floral resources. Flowers. They are 10 millimetres long. 10 millimetres short. They're less hairy. They have a pronounced abdomen. Pronounced abdomen? Abdomen. Their abdomen is pronounced ab abdomen. Pronounced abdomen? Pronounced abdomen. That's weird. Black, brown with yellow spots. Stripes. 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 Yellow stripes. They live in tree hollows. Under eaves. An eave. You know, that, that part of the roof that hangs over the side of the house. Eave. Under floorboards. In letterboxes. Cable reels. And even compost bins. Asian honeybee stings can cause anaphylactic reactions in allergic-prone people. The Asian honeybee is a natural host for varroa mites. Varroa mite. Varroa mite? Is that that stuff Scrap Boy likes on his toast? They live wherever bee colonies are found. There are two types of varroa mite. Varroa destructor and Varroa Jacobs and I. Varroa Destructor! Destructor! Oh. Asian honeybees have adapted to withstand Varroa mite infestations and are now a natural host. Asian honeybees and Varroa mites together kill our bees. And this affects honey production, pollination, and above all else, food production. That's a terrible situation for our bees. It also has consequences for us people too. Without bees, we can't grow food. We can't let that happen. We have to do something. Indigenous rangers, scientists and Top Watch are looking out for the Asian honeybee right now. But you can help too. Exactly, Dirt Girl. We need your help because if every ranger and every scientist had their eyes out today, there's not enough of them to look over the whole country. So get out there, use your phone, take a picture, let us know where you see these things, because as a citizen scientist, your effort matters. Without the most amazing country, we're not farmers. Like, that's what we do. That's our number one, is to look after the country. We're nothing without the soil. Sentinel herd is, um, yeah, it's just like a small group of animals, say 25 to 30 head of animals. Um, there's two groups up in the Darwin area. There's a couple more in Catherine and another one further out around the VRD and down the Douglas Daly area. So what their main sort of job is, is they get bled once a week or monthly and then bloods then go back to laboratory and they sort of keep an eye on what sort of 
uh, insect-borne disease we've got in the livestock up here. The blood tests themselves for the sentinel herds is mainly looking at blue tongue virus. It's carried by insects and biting midges. That's the one we mainly test for here. And um, yeah, touch wood has been no outbreaks and things like that. As Australia grows and more water, road and rail infrastructure is built, it's important that we keep the remote and regional parts of our country safe. If we're not careful, high-risk pests and diseases could move, potentially destroying farms, communities and businesses. Biosecurity, it's everyone's business. Standing behind me are some full-time employees of the Department of Health. These chickens put their well-being on the line for ours. This is a sentinel flock of chickens and they are used by the Department of Health to monitor for endemic viruses that could affect the human population. The viruses are transmitted via mosquito bites. So mosquitoes breed, they bite an infected animal and then they carry the virus in their body and then they transmit it to the next animal they bite. And that could be a chicken, that could be a horse or a person or, or any kind of animal. The consequences of any of those diseases getting into Australia would have a big impact on our domestic livestock and our export markets, which would be very detrimental to Australian agriculture. In addition, some of those diseases could affect our native wildlife, and obviously we don't want that to happen. Extremely important for the cattle industry. Let's, um, it's for our export industry in particular, we need to be clean and to be seen that we're onto these things and monitoring and got procedures in place. So their main job, even though they're only a small group of animals, really important for, for the cattle industry up here and our, our export. At the end of the day, barramundi really is Australia's fish. It's, you know, got an Aboriginal name, it's, it's you know, what people equate with Australia. We're a fifth generation Northern Territory family and from our point of view you know the, the river behind us the Adelaide River is you know got lots of barra in it so if something comes in that that causes a problem in the wild it's going to affect not just our business but it will also affect indigenous communities it'll affect commercial fishing it'll affect uh, tourism. When uh, when people are go going on or near farms to think about their own impact you know are they are they bringing you know, foreign bait with them, or are they are they going to be, you know, jeopardising the stock that of the on the farms that they're visiting? Is something that we really need people to think about. Uh, you know, what we can do as fishermen is uh, when we're going going to go fishing, consider the bait that we use. You know, if, if you're using something that's imported, it's likely come from a place where there are contagious diseases, and they can be introduced into the Australian environment. Whether that's using a prawn. Uh, that's come from an overseas or whether it's uh, using a, a head from an imported barramundi in a crab pot is a problem. I, I don't know what the dollars are for, for tourism in the Northern Territory in terms of barra fishing, but people come to Darwin, they want to catch a barra, they want to eat a barra. And so if that opportunity is not um, available to them, then, you know, it's, it's, it's massive. We, we care a lot about the environment that we're working in. Our business depends on it. Our, uh, our, that's where our heart is as well. Dear ocean, saltwater body, weather maker, watery blanket that wraps around you, me, family, community. We are all girt by sea. Dear ocean, dear ocean, all around us you surround this island nation. Flotation, transportation, recreation, immigration, inspiration. You are home to creatures and plants of the deep. The turtle, the dugong, the dolphin, the fish. I wish. I wish and hope. And hope for your future. And although you yield wealth from above and below. And below. The undertow can also bring that which we do not know. Creature hitchhikers and wave riders that don't belong here. That don't belong here. That sneak and creep into our flora and fauna. From every corner, together. Together. We look out for you. Identify. Rectify. With many hands in unity, in unity, we can protect our biosecurity. It's only fair that we handle our ocean with care.
This is called biofowl, Costa. Biofowl? What's this all about? It's marine pests. They um, grow on the hulls of boats when they're moored in the harbour or when they're travelling around in the ocean. They like to attach to smooth surfaces and um, there's all sorts of marine pests. These ones are like barnacles. They can come in on ships in ballast water. They can come in on uh, drift nets, ghost nets they're called, or just in on floats or anything like that. They come into Australia. We are vectors, intersectors, pathways and superhighways for pests and disease. So please stop and connect with country. Know and then care. It's only fair to protect the plants, the birds, the fish, the marine life, all the creatures of the sea. Those on land that you'll see and those that you won't. So don't think it's no big deal and do. Be brave, connect with country with your heart and see the beauty of this land on which we stand. Understand the traditions and culture. Bring nothing, take nothing. See and feel everything. Listen, ask if you don't know and explore with respect. And always be willing to connect and care for country. Yeah.